Hungary, February 2019. The first occasion when it is allowed for muzzle-loading hunters to participate on a driven pheasant hunt. It has been a long legal process to legalize the full scale of this traditional hunting method, but now it is done. There is not a single hunting method that the hunter cannot try in Hungary with his front-loading firearm. It is out of question that the best community events for hunters are the driven small game hunts. The day you spend with your friends enjoying the beauty of nature is just priceless. And the joy is double when you are invited by an old friend to hunt fully natural good flying pheasants. The season starts on the 1st of October and lasts until the last day of February. When we are hunting for natural pheasants, we only shoot the male and protect the hands. And that's my old friend Alexander with his beautiful original Mortimer shotgun loading the first charge in the boars. Black powder, over powder wed, shot and overshot wed are the components of the load carefully set to give the best grouping for his beauty. The charge for his 15 gauge shotgun is 60 grains of 1.5 Swiss powder, a half inch felt wed, 32 grams of 3mm shot and a cardboard overshot wed. Although it is a pheasant hunt, it is also possible to shoot the fox, or if you are lucky and quick, a jackal, a predator that's population is booming in the past years in my country, a beautiful trophy for each and every single hunter it is. This shotgun is a 15 gauge gun made by John Manton and Sons. It is quite interesting that according to the patterns on the bore, it seems like it is Damascus barrel, but in fact it is cast steel that was decorated with acid. But this does not reduce the modern time value, as with the Damascus barrels you never know if the metal is corroded between the twisted ribbons. This shotgun is still in perfect condition. It was inspected by the Hungarian CIP proof house, so it is completely safe to shoot. The bores are are cylinder, no chokes here, so the range is limited. The type of driven hunt we are participating in is called the U hunt, named after the form of the letter U, indicating the shape of the hunter's line. With maximum 40-50 meters between the guns, the U slowly moves forward while the dogs try to wake up the pheasants from the bushes. The good dog is a must, it must not wander too much forward, but has to point and wake the bird when the hunters can take a shot. The past few days were quite rainy, that makes hunting a bit more difficult, as when the feathers of the birds are wet, they are not really willing to take off, but they rather walk and run on the ground. This is why it is so important to have the best possible dogs. We are in the center south of Hungary in Tolna County. This area is well known for its excellent big and small game population. Red deer, fallow deer, wild boar and robot population here are rich and healthy. The small game reduced a bit in the past years due to the appearance of the jackal, but with good predator control the natural population can still be preserved and increased. And that's my powder flask. It is also an original piece made in the mid 19th century. And this small one here is my priming flask I made from Red Deer's antler. This is a very classical form here in Central Europe. I have my fine priming powder inside that is of 4F granulation. This fine powder is the key in fast ignition. And that's my volumetric powder measure set for 90 grains. For measuring the shot I also use a British volumetric measure. It is quick, easy and convenient to use it. 
Now it is set to give 33 grams of two and a half millimeter shot. És most egyébként 33 gram két és fél milliméteres sörétet használok. The gun I'm using is the new flintlock double shotgun by Pedersoli. This little 20 gauge beauty proved to be a formidable hunting arm for geese and ducks. One bore is cylinder, the other bore is modified for longer shots. The pattern is nicely tight and I can reach out with this gun until 35-40 meters if I'm in a good mood. While loading the shotgun the same rules apply as with rifled arms. Never leave an air gap between powder and projectile and be careful not to mix the bores while loading. It is not funny to fire two full loads from the same barrel. So even if the hunt is exciting and you want to load as fast as possible, stay cool and slow down. Better to be safe than firing a bubble in your bore. Another important safety rule is that never load your powder charge from your flask directly into the bore. If you have a spark in the breech, you will be holding a hand grenade. That is why I always use the powder measure to pour the charge in the bore. There was a pheasant cock coming towards me, but it was very high. It was a true high tower target, so I overestimated my gun's capabilities and my capabilities as well. I did not fire my second bore. My lead was quite a few meters, but still it was a miss. But it is natural if you wait so much for an opportunity like this. It can happen, you can't control yourself. And we have been waiting for this since 2016, so it is obvious that we are overexcited. I also tried a shot of this kind, but it was very high also, at least 80 meters. I tried a choke bore, but it did not work. It's a pity that we could not take a shot on the jays. They are really clever birds. They flew out of the line so nobody can place a shot. Not the driving line, nor the standing hunters. They were low and they also flew in front of the electric poles. We were not really successful in the morning hunts, so we waited eagerly for the afternoon sessions to come. When you are hunting with a muzzle loader, you are not after big numbers, but after well-deserved memories. A few pheasants for the kitchen table will be just fine. Now it was time to get them.
In the end, both of us got what we came for. First of all, we enjoyed a beautiful winter day with some excellent woodworking. Second, spending the day with true friends is always a joy. And we even shot some birds for the dinner. What else can we ask for anyway? <laughs>